Welcome to Oakmont Country Club, the home of the 2016 US Open. This is the ninth time that the course has hosted the championship, more than any other in USGA history. So we caught up with some of the players to find out what makes this such a unique and ideal US Open venue. Any given day at Oakmont is probably the hardest golf course in the world that I've ever played anyway, um, without messing with the setup. You know, it's just any given day, no wind, hardest course in the world, I think. Um, it just doesn't let you miss a shot. You miss a shot and it's really, really difficult to recover. Probably the toughest golf course I've ever played, but I don't mind that. I tend to do okay on tough golf courses and, you know, and loads under par and winning. Um, you know, I'm sure loads over par will probably win this week. The rough is uh, as thick and juicy as we ever see it, so uh, you don't want to be in that. And, and uh, I mean, quite a lot of tee shots are sloping. Some of the areas you're hitting into is quite slopey, so Trying to hold the ball on the fairway is a bit of a challenge sometimes and you just got to figure out your strategy. If you want to lay back a little bit, it might be a bit easier to hold the fairway, but then you're going to give up yardage coming into the green. These greens are very severe when it comes to the slope. You, you can't miss on the wrong side. And you're going to have, it's going to be tough to two putt a lot of the times out here, let alone get it up and down if you miss the green. The rough is nasty. <laughs> it's going to be a tough test. Oakmont will play to a par of 70. There's 210 bunkers, the longest par three and the second longest par five in US Open history. The field of 156 players will be facing a challenge, both physical and mental. You will hit bad golf shots. You might even hit some good ones that might get the odd bad bounce or something and, and doesn't work out the way you planned. And it's just, if you can, just keep your patience, keep your focus and move on, that's really going to be key. You need to preserve your energy a lot at the start of the week. I think people can get caught up in going out and playing too many practice rounds. You know, at the end of the day, you need to go out and just hit good shots. Um, if you hit good shots, it doesn't matter how well you know the course. If you hit bad shots, it's, you know, you're going to be in trouble. All US Opens are a mental test. You, you know you're going to get beaten up by the course. Sometimes it feels like a bit unfairly out there, but you've got to kind of find a way to ride through those bad times and kind of wait for the good times to come back a little bit. Everybody's going to have a little hiccup somewhere and you just got to gotta stick, stick with it and uh, come back from it and, uh, and do what you can, but it's going to be tough for everybody. The, the winner is, is the guy who's going to be able to deal with, uh, you know, getting through these tough, uh, you know, <laughs> moments the best. You're going to have to be mentally strong, you're going to have to stay patient, you're going to have to understand that a lot of people are going to be missing fairways, everyone's going to be missing fairways and you know you just got to be smart and, and take your medicine, pitch out and try and make a part the hard way. We're not having a lot of fun but it's it's very satisfying signing for a decent, like any sort of decent score around power in the US Open, you kind of you give yourself a bit, bit more of a pat on the back than you do anywhere else. The winning score at a US Open is generally a lot higher than a normal PGA Tour event. In 2007, there were only eight rounds under par for the entire week here at Oakmont, two of which belonged to the winner, Angel Cabrera. Sometimes, uh, you know, when the winning score is over par in US Open, it's because the greens are fast, you know, rough's a little bit long, but there's everything with this course. And uh, people have been asking me what I think the winning score is going to be. And, and obviously 5 over 1 and 07 and um, you can take or give a few strokes off that number and, and I think uh, you know there's your winning score. The who's who of golf over the last hundred years. It's a testament to how good a test and how complete a test it is. I mean Bob Jones, Jack Nicklaus, Johnny Miller, um, Hogan and in recent times Cabrera, Ernie Els. It's a, it's a very special test and it's I guess the members at Oakmont can be proud of the fact that the guy who lives here is usually one of the best players in the world and one, one of the best players in history. 